invited to go fucking mental on this motherfucking drop. The countdown has just begun. Are you ready? Let's go. Go, 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 go. Now we're back from the dead. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra, Ghost Girl Diaries podcast, and uh, those are for brave. Those of you that are brave enough to join the circle, it's like it's my first day talking today. I am here with Elfie. I can't wait to chat about our topics today. It is all kinds of interesting things. I know a lot of you guys know about Skinwalkers. There's other native lore, and that includes stuff like. Um, the Wendigo, and it seems like every tribe or like specific tribes have something like similar of the, of the cryptozoology character. So it's going to be kind of interesting to dive into that. Um, I just wanted to tell you really quickly though how much I appreciate you guys uh, for my book launch. I had no idea it was going to go so well, um, and I just wanted to give you guys a shout out. I actually got notification yesterday that the sales um, for the first week were so great that um, Barnes and Noble and a few other major books chains picked my uh, book up to put it on their website and they should be having some in stock in store soon um so that's just crazy like i was not expecting that they kind of tell you as a first time um author or um you know self-publisher not to expect it to go into like a major chain because uh, they don't know your work they don't know how you know how well it's gonna do but it's from my understanding they sort of see the analytics on the back side of um, releasing the book and when they see the analytics that are so good like you guys supporting me um, buying the book they were really impressed and that's why they picked the book up I actually got the phone call from um, one of my exes who's in the book he's one of the chapters in the book he's been a longtime friend and like supporter all these years and he he called me yesterday and he's like dude, your book is on Barnes and Noble. And I was like, what? Like, I was literally like in shock. He's like, dude, I'm going to send you a screenshot like right now. Like I'm dead serious. And I was like, okay. So he sent me the screenshot and I ended up getting the email um, of the confirmation that it did in fact go to major, um, major bookstores. So thank you guys for just, you know, not only buying the book, but just being my supporters all these years, because it's been an interesting journey to say the least as you guys know like going from like being like banned on YouTube and then coming back and like we're obviously all been in such chaos with 2020 and coming out of that chaos so it's just I'm really appreciative so um, I'm also appreciative of somebody else that's about to step in 
And Elfie's in the house. Okay, hello, Miss Elfie. How are you? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, like wait, what's going on? I know. <laughs> um, Skinwalkers, oh. are you excited for this? Yeah, I'm excited. Also, by the way, congratulations on hearing that about the book and the, how well the sales are going. Thank you. Yeah, really shocking, right? Like, so, And then I was in so much shock when it happened. <laughs> if you want to hear a funny story. So I mm. called Kat while I was driving and I was on FaceTime. I literally, Kat was the first person I called. I like called her and I was literally screaming at the top of my lungs. I lost my voice. <laughs> And um, I'm driving on FaceTime, which, by the way, isn't safe. Um, but <laughs> I had it. I had my. Yeah, we phone. don't recommend that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Just for anybody that's watching. <laughs> but um, then I got home, and Kat called me back on FaceTime, and I was mm -hmm. literally just like in shock. Like I literally like, couldn't even do anything. I was like sitting there, like <laughs> in shock. And so she's like, Crystal, I just Googled it, and I found it on Barnes and Noble. And like on FaceTime, Kat literally like, <laughs> shows me the website. <laughs> It was just ridiculous. So it was it was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm very, very appreciative. I had no idea. Um, I think people were interested in my book because like, I've never really brought my personal life out in the public, you know? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think they were, people were curious about it because I've always been so sort of quiet. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to continue to stay quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to spill any tea on that. Is your cat oh, yeah. knocking stuff hmm? over again? No. Oh. It was my heater. It's like, oh, my God, don't, let's not have that noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little cold here. I know. What is it like? Because Kat's getting, I think she said it was 19 there today. Uh, Probably in the 30s. It's probably going to dip down even lower, and then we're supposed to get more snow this weekend, too. <laughs> so it's like, yay, winter. No. I mean, I would Joy. die. I'm sitting here complaining when it's like 40 degrees in the desert. You know oh, what I mean? God. Like, <laughs> have you been to Vegas before? A long time ago. Was it? A very okay. long time ago. I think it was during the either. I think it was around the end of the summer, maybe. So it wasn't mm -hmm. yet. It was starting to chill <coughs> at night, but it wasn't like ungodly Great. <laughs> hot yep. day. Oh, yeah. Don't come here like August, September. Like, just don't. Just, just don't. I would melt. Mm -mm. I I just I just be a puddle on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't start to cool down in Vegas until like, honestly October, honestly October. Oh, okay. Yeah, and like I mean June can get a little you know, saucy. I like to say like it can get a little <laughs> little humid you know like June July but like August, I mean just don't, just don't just, you know just forget about no, it. No, just don't. Like people walk from their cars inside the house like <laughs> air conditioning 110 degrees of course phoenix is worse like God. i have friends in arizona and it's literally like 125 degrees down there in the summer mm. and i'm like oh and i've heard the warnings like don't go out there just yeah. stay inside don't, yeah don't <laughs> yeah you they <laughs> literally to... can cook like meat patties on their dashboard like Oh god! Of their car, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's how hot it is. Like, no. So, where did I even get the idea for Skinwalkers? Okay, I got this idea because <laughs> I ordered two native books. I have them right here. Do you guys want to see them? Um, oh, okay. I'm in the process of reading them, so I'm not done. But I have two native lore books. One is called American Indian Ghost Stories of the West. So this is one, mm -hmm. and then this one's called Native American Ghost Stories. And obviously, you guys know I'm very proud to be Cherokee and all that jazz. And um, it's a huge, big thing. Like, skinwalkers, like, don't mock a Native American when they're just an indigenous person when they're talking about a skinwalker. Because, like, they think if you mock them or, like, make fun of it, like, you're going to get eaten mm -hmm. by the skinwalker. So, like, not their problem. You know what I mean? Like... And we've seen this on episodes of, like, I think Ghost Adventures did one, and there was a couple. I think Josh Gates did one on, like, the Skinwalker, too. And these yeah. people take it dead serious. Like, you don't want to joke. Do, like, generally speaking, do you think they exist? I think they do. I'm mean, Actually, I find it very fascinating, the fact that it's very difficult to have people even talk about it from the culture and everything because it's such, like you said, it's such a serious thing that it's like you don't mess with that. Mm-mm everything so it's it it really does feel like feel like there is some validity that it 
it's not even a matter of like a boogeyman thing. It's more like, no, really, don't mess with that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, when Ghost Adventures did their episode, I think they went to Skinwalker Ranch. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my allergies mm-hmm. are really bad, so excuse me for my little like <clears throat> that I have going on. It's not Corona. Don't worry, I'm safe. Okay, <laughs> like, I've been quarantining. I promise. <laughs> but um, <laughs> like literally, um, so he was trying to interview people about the Skinwalker. If you guys remember that episode, and literally he couldn't get anybody to talk to him because they're like. If you believed, you wouldn't be asking about it. If you believed, you wouldn't be mm-hmm. here looking for it. And so I did a video on the Skinwalkers. And what I did was I have um, one of my girlfriends. Um, I'm not going to say what tribe she's from because I don't want her to get in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want mm-hmm. them to find out who it was. But she is <clears throat> a Southwestern tribe. I'll say that. I'll say a Southwestern tribe. And I had asked her about Skinwalker. Now, technically... She is allowed to speak to me about it because I'm Native American, right? So Mm -hmm. what she basically said to me was, yeah, you and I can discuss it because you're Native, but understand that when you get this knowledge or you know about it, like, there's a chance, like, if you expose it to the public, it will come for you, is basically what she said. And that's reiteration of what happened in the Ghost Adventures episode. Same thing was, like, we can't tell you or your life will be in danger, and mm-hmm. he was asking everybody, just tell somebody tell me about the skinwalker. It's like, no, if you believed in it, you wouldn't ask and you'd already know. Um, so when I did talk to my girlfriend, Tori, um, they do believe it exists. Like, it is a legit thing. There's a lot of different variations. Elfie and I were kind of chatting about this before the stream. Every tribe sort of has a different version of the skinwalker. Um, the Wendigo is sort of another form of it. There's a lot of different theories depending on the tribe that you're looking at. So some of the tribes believe that um, it could be an alien crypto character that was sent here to sort of watch over the tribe. And if anybody steps out of line, the Wendigo or the Skinwalker will like take care of it, quote unquote, by like eating it or removing or killing or whatever. So Mm. some tribes look at it as protective. Other tribes look at it as... um, an actual crypto character like living in the forests of these tribes and like don't turn against the wendigo or the skinwalker or they will it'll kill you period don't hunt it don't go looking for it Mm -hmm. but you do think of things like like innocently like there's got to be natives that go like hiking on the on the reservations because usually the reses are very large so do people that go hiking accidentally stumble upon it and then get eaten possibly I mean, it could happen. It's, it's, I mean, there. it sounds like almost a lot of the times when shows have done it, and they look at you going like, why are you looking for that? Right, Why are yeah. you going towards it? <laughs> why do you want to find the skinwalker, right? Like, literally. Elfie, what's your um, opinion on um, cryptozoology in general? So, like, what do you, what are your feelings on, generally speaking, of course, of, like, Loch Ness Monster and Mothman and uh, Bigfoot? What are just your general opinions on it? Oh, I'm absolutely fascinated with uh, crypto and everything. I'm not as well versed in it, but I think it's an interesting topic where I feel like it's a lot of times it's almost, it sometimes ends up being the catch-all of like these creatures that we're not sure whether they are just extinct species that have come back, supernatural creatures, or creatures that we have not been able to actually uh, record and everything that are just... Uh, undiscovered and everything i think crypto ends up being that kind of Mm catch-all until we can parse it out to figure out what it is Mm -hmm. but it's also interesting when some of the cryptos seem to like tick off all the things where it's like well it could be an extinct creature that might be supernatural and we just haven't been able to discover it yet right (laughs) well like there's mothman like didn't you go investigate mothman yes I, oh, went okay. the, I am the so Western. jealous. <laughs> I am so effing jealous. Like, it's not even funny. Because, like, that is my ultimate dream. You wouldn't dream. be if you were in the cold out there. No, so what What happened? <laughs> like, was it, was the cold was just like, okay, this is enough. Like, I hate the weather. I can't even focus. Because I've oh. been in those cases before. Well, we went to the, the TNT fields and everything. We actually went into one of those, I think they call them, like, the domes and whatnot. Which yes. Which was the... Um, places where they would store the TNT and, and whatever else military stuff mm-hmm. and it was like the domes itself are, is freezing because right. it's this empty like stone structure it's but then again, we're the also cold. like in 
Yeah, but mm -hmm. also we're in the woods with the tall grass and everything out in the middle of nowhere, which was probably... See, like, I've been in those cases where, like, the, the the environment is so miserable that you don't even mm -hmm. care if Mothman, like, walks up to you. Like, I am so cold and miserable. I don't give a shit if Mothman's here or not. You know what I mean? Like, is that what it was like? It was fun. Like, right. I really enjoyed, like, exploring. Like, I would totally go back there in a heartbeat just to Were go you back scared to the with the mine thing? Places. Like, possibly, like, there could be mines or whatever? Or not really? Um, luckily, I don't think we went to any of the areas where there was, I think this was the storage and everything, so mm -hmm. I don't think there was any worry of actual, like, active stuff right. in there. It was just more, like, cold, <laughs> cold <laughs> She's like, let me reiterate, it was effing cold, okay? Like, it was like, so cold. Like, it was cold. fine for the first hour, and then after a while, we're, we're, like, sitting there, our teeth are chattering as we're trying to do an EVP session, <laughs> like... Why this am I is laughing? not going to turn out so well. Because I've been there. I have been there. And you're like, I went to this place in Colorado. It was outside. It's very haunted. It's it's like, I mean, it's crazy haunted. Like, we got some really mm. good evidence. The pilot's on my uh, YouTube channel. But <laughs> it was so cold. I was like, I just don't care. Like, I just don't care. <laughs> And like you're like trying to talk and you're like I'm gonna do a voiceover and I'm gonna do a like intro in the in the microphone and you're trying to talk and like oh, 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 I'm so cold like literally okay like that's look cool. miss no that's my breath I'm freezing <laughs> right now that is just my breath <laughs> that is not an apparition guys that is just my breath from the cold air okay like, that literally. might be my my spirit leaving my body we don't know yet <laughs> oh my god because I've been there that's why I'm like literally crying because like I've been there like I know what it feels like people think paranormal and especially crypto that's mm -hmm. why I don't do crypto because crypto is hard man like you're out in the middle of nowhere like I admire Josh Gates because I could never be him because oh I love the outdoors but he goes <laughs> hardcore with some of the outdoors oh my god he does I've gone camping I've gone hiking and everything but I, he's another level. <laughs> he is. He's like, oh, we had to take six planes to get to this little island off the coast of oh, Indonesia. God. And you're like, and imagine all the gear. Like, when you see, pro like, I don't mm -hmm. think you guys watching, Elvi and I know, like, production all gear. The production. <laughs> it's not a joke. Like, you're talking, mm -hmm. like, 30 bags of, or more of, of, like, heavy ass production gear. <laughs> and, like, they're oh, like, yeah. oh, we're going to hike in to, to look for Mothman. It's only six miles in. And I'm going to need everybody to help carry the luggage. And you're like, I don't want to. Like, two miles in, you're fine. And then you're like, I'm going to die. And it's cold. <laughs> and you know for sure that the six planes to get to the little island was the six little tin cans. Oh, yeah. Planes that, are like, you hope that will And they're not there. up to code. <laughs> it's the planes that are not up to code by American standards whatsoever. And you're like, well, what's that noise? Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's just the wing flapping on the outside. It's done that for it's 10 okay. years. <laughs> Get more duct tape, it'll be fine. <laughs> We're sick. Why are we laughing? Because it's so true. That's why the production <laughs> companies have insurance on us, guys. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, oh, literally. No. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as the crypto characters go, Mothman's yeah. probably one of my favorites. Um, and then. Honestly, skinwalkers have probably a close second. And it's only because, <clears throat> I mean, it's probably connected to me being Native American just because I do find it, like, very, very creepy. Um, mm -hmm. So, now, the term skinwalker directly is connected to the Navajo Nation, which is where skin ra skinwalker ranch is. That's where you guys have seen, like, the southwestern side of um, what a skinwalker is to them, to that tribe, Okay. Um, I had some people asking questions, too, on my last video about the reservations, so I thought I would kind of mm. just lightly touch on that, okay? So, um, you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, when the native land was taken from the tribes, they were forced onto um, what's called reservations, okay? So there were treaties, which is basically an agreement, a legal agreement, that are not respected still to this day, might I add. But the treaties mm -hmm. were signed by the government, um, which was the old white men farts that came in and took over the land. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, because it's true, you know. Like I'm sorry, but so they basically you know the the joy manifests destiny. <laughs> <laughs> 
Elfie's like, yeah, let's do great. No, but so they have these reservations and on these reservations, they sort of created a city within a city is the way to explain it. So they can be quite large. Some can be small, depends on the tribe. There's literally probably a hundred or more tribes throughout America and North America that people don't even know about. Okay. Um, Cherokee Nation, which is what I'm through, which is through Oklahoma, is very large. In fact, they were just given more land um, through more treaties through the government, which I think is amazing. Um, mm. But on these tribes, you know, they uh, on the reservations, you create this like city within a city. So they have gas sto- gas stations, they have stores, they have um, you know, it's it's like a city within a city. Literally, anybody can go on to the reservation. Um, but when you're talking about something like what Ghost Adventures did was they went in, they asked questions, they went into the museums, they wanted to know, they wanted to do, um, like actual interviews with people regarding the skinwalkers. That's when they're going to shut communication down. And that's Mm -hmm. because like the tribes, the way they feel is that, and I, I agree with them to a certain point. I do agree with them, which is, you know, they've already had so much taken from them. You know, like, they were here first. They've already had so much taken from them. The last thing they need is for somebody to come in, do a story or an interview on the Skinwalker, and and essentially make a mockery out of the tribe, right? Like, that could happen. You Mm -hmm. look at people who are skeptics or people that don't believe in it, and they don't want to be made fun of or made to become a mockery. So, um, and and then, also, they look at the Skinwalkers or these creatures as, I don't want to say beings that they worship, because that's not it, but they have a healthy respect for it. And they don't want other people to come in and be disrespectful. And if that person leaves, now the skinwalker is going to take, you know, the aftermath out on the tribe. Does that make sense? Like, and when you're talking about Mm -hmm. a tribe, I'm not talking like, I mean, some tribes are small, like a few hundred, but there could be, I think Navajo nations in the thousands, much like Cherokee nation is. So that's where I I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear on what a reservation is. Anybody can go to a reservation. You just have to, you should be respectful. Absolutely. Because that is... It's interesting because reservations work within their own laws and reservations usually have their own police station, their own um, prisons, their own, they literally like just govern themselves in a way. And that was sort of the agreement when the treaties were drawn for each of the reservations to have their own places and unique situations because they they felt like their land land was taken away. So the trade-off is this is my property, this is my hundreds of thousands of acres, right? So that should explain what the reservation is like. Mm -hmm. Now, not the whole reservation. It might be huge. It could be hundreds of thousands of acres, but it's not going to be completely inhabited by their people. The the reservations are much like cities where all the people are going to live together. So there's going to be acres and acres of other land that's just nothingness, wilderness. And that's where... Yeah, isn't it usually, like, really spread out sometimes? Like, like your neighbor could be, like, next... 10 miles away or something sometimes there's a reservation downtown in vegas i've been to actually i can't, I can't remember which mm. tribe it is but it's fairly small but it's also literally in the heart of vegas but then they have other oh, properties wow. of, of connected reservations like if you ever wanted to get married in vegas there's a native america this same tribe the native american um it's like a reservation that's a little north of vegas and it's it's got like it's gorgeous just if you ever mm. wanted to get married in Vegas, look for the re- the reservation part of I can't whatever tribe it is. They have like a venue. It's beautiful and it's actually not very expensive. I think for like 150 people all inclusive, it's like eight thousand dollars, which is really cheap for like a full blown wedding. So anyway, wow. yeah, there's a lot of perks when you are Native American. So I can go to the tribes and like you know I can I actually get free health care through all of the tribes just for ha- for being like as much blood as I have. But once again, mm-hmm. talking with Tori, my girlfriend, who is of the Southwest Tribes, she's telling me about skinwalkers, and she's basically saying, like, don't be surprised if it comes knocking on your door. And she meant it. And she didn't mean it to, like, be offended, like, trying to, like, scare me. She meant it, like, actually the skinwalker is now going to know what you are because they believe in energetic cords, right? Mm-hmm. So she's energetically passing this information on to me, saying, like, now it's connected to you. So now it's been extended to you. So I've been sitting here for like a hot minute waiting for the skinwalker. I shouldn't say that. That's not funny. God, Crystal is horrible. I'm sorry. Um, but seriously, what do you want? To, what? Where should we go with skinwalkers? So there's two different versions of skinwalkers. One where it can. I mean, both of them sort of mutate into like animals. So sometimes they'll look like deer. Sometimes they'll look like moose. Sometimes they'll look like cougars. Some of yeah, them. Well, I can understand her fear of it just because I mean it can look at you if it's in like human form and 
it's got you just yeah. from a look yeah it's got you you're, you're done you're done so some of them will just kill to kill others are cannibalistic mm. so <laughs> Elf, elfie made a joke earlier she was like Hey guys, welcome back to the stream today. We're going to talk about cannibalism. <laughs> Literally, it's just, it's sick. Why are we laughing, Elvie? We're Happy so Valentine's. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, guys. Welcome to the Cannibal Podcast. Um, okay, so... I think it's because it's so dark. It's, it's, in a lot of ways, it's so dark. It's like you kind of have to joke just so it's not like, oh my goodness, this is like some dark stuff here. That, that's why I make a lot of jokes, I think, with paranormal, because mm-hmm. I feel like... I mean, I don't know, Aaron Goodwin's, like, goofy, where I'm, like, just more of the jokester. But I feel like it can get serious when you're investigating. You know what I mean? Like, it can. Mm-hmm. And I've had those moments where I'm very serious. But I've also noticed that when you're investigating, no matter what it is, you tend to get more evidence when you're, like, just including them as part of the conversation and, like, laughing and making jokes. They tend to really like that. So, of course, in my personality, I just, I can't take a lot of things serious, you know? I've got to, like, I've got to have that little, little zinger in there. Um, Some of my best evidence, honestly, or some of the best stuff I've encountered was when we weren't investigating, when we were just in the space, talking, interacting with the space, suddenly something would happen. It's like, oh, (laughs) something wants to talk now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, by the way, yeah, um, the, I'm going to be releasing the pilot, um, this week hopefully in the next couple of days on youtube which is what i just the most recent pilot i did a couple of years about two years ago and Mm. (coughs) there's one part i cut cat out because she's like it it was getting dark like it was just you know you know when the energy turns and suddenly you're just like oh it's not funny anymore yeah there's like a demon that just came in i guess we shouldn't laugh anymore you know like it was that (laughs) sort of energy like it's let's not laugh at satan like he gets offended easily you know and so Chanel and I are like, you know, really investigating, trying to like get this going. And we ask, <laughs> we ask Kat to come in because Kat is very like, I'm sorry, Kat, are you on? I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. She's very like, she is the baby witch. You know, she's very of, she's mm-hmm. very of the light. She doesn't want to do anything bad. She just loves everybody, <laughs> including demons. You know, like, it's just who she is. And so she walks in the room and she feels this like really predominant like dark energy. She just like she looks at us. She's like, "Here's the equipment, guys. I gotta go." And she like does a three sixty and just like walks out the room. And we're like, "Cat, nope, do you want to like come back or no?" She's like, "Nope, I'm good. I'm good." I was like, "Okay, okay. I'm glad. It's fine." So I get it. You know, like it's it's that energy that you feel. Did you feel like? When I was reading about the skinwalkers, I felt the energy. I, like, can you can you empath through it from from reading the information? Well, what's what was interesting? I couldn't really empath through it. It was just more like reading the stories and reading, like, <clears throat> reading the legends and everything. And it would definitely make me more curious to actually talk. Go go on the reservation. Actually, talk to people. But the thing is, I could see where ghost ventures where like you just roll up, roll up and start like talking, asking them questions. Mm-hmm. And of course, they're going to just close up because it's like we don't know you. We're not going to talk to you. So maybe if they got to know people and actually interacted with them instead of just rolling up with a the camera, mm-hmm. they might have gotten more information. Right. But the legends themselves, it just it was always fascinating where they talked about. Sometimes it start off as a person who was a medicine, a healer, and then they never said quite what would happen, but for some reason, like, something would happen in their life, and they would have to do a bad thing, and they flip from a healer was, to something It was almost darker. like a mystical um, energetic shift, rather than, like, a mm-hmm. physical energetic shift, is what Elfie's saying. So, sort of, like, rather than, like, uh, rather than... You being like, oh, I walked outside and I did something bad and got attacked by the skinwalker, like physically, like it like chopped my foot off. Let's just say that. Instead, it was like, no, there was like this darkness that changed in me and I I, like Mm -hmm. shifted paths in my life to like a darker sort of path. So it's interesting. In other words, it sort of affects people at all different, all different ways. Um, So let's, I want to go, let's go ahead and start diving into the, um, 
the Navajo side of this, which is where mm-hmm. the Skinwalker comes in from. So I have my notes here. So there is, and I'm not familiar with other tribes. So I am familiar with like Cherokee and, and like my indigenous heritage, but I am not familiar with other tribes. So the only thing I know about other tribes is I can either call my friends that are in tribes or, or like doing research about it. So don't, Navajo is not my tribe. I, I'm not familiar with it. So I only know from what I've researched. So they actually do believe in not only medicine men of Navajo, but then there's medicine witches. So once again, referring mm-hmm. back to the Ghost Adventures episode, they thought there were like witches resin that had been left over in that cave. Do you guys remember that? And they thought that these Navajo witches were like summoning stuff inside of the cave or trying to pull forth the um navajo uh skinwalker and sometimes they'll even give it offerings like a live chicken or even a dead chicken um and they're trying to like lure it out i mean essentially to me i don't know how you read it elfie but it's like black magic are you there yeah i was losing you there oh that's weird it's because i said black magic just kidding. I said the the Navajo witches are essentially talking about how it's it's like black magic is that they're sort of using the skinwalker to their advantage to do sort of like dark practices. Is that what you kind of read into it? Well, that's what I found interesting was this it was this idea of like the the skinwalker is usually a person who is a shapeshifter who has turned to this the darker side who is now more of a trickster and it caused her trouble and and uh, all various degrees of things. And the idea of then someone else utilizing the skinwalker sounds even to me even more dangerous because you have a trickster who is going to do whatever they want and then you're hoping that they're going to do as you say. It's sort of like a shapeshifter. <laughs> sort of like yeah. a shapeshifter is that either you can become that shapeshifter or you can summon in the, sh- the shapeshifter to like sort of... Mm-hmm. What's the word I'm looking for? I guess um, aid you in your in your dark magic practices. I'm not really sure how to word it. I guess if that sounds right. Um, now shape shifting once again, like referring back to the beginning, which is what a skinwalker is. So they'll appear to you, generally speaking, as in human form, but they can shape shift mm-hmm. into other things. Um, looking on the internet, it looks like wolves are are one of the major ones, or like uh, cougars, or like bobcats, sort of thing. Yeah, I think I mentioned basically it was the idea it was the taboo. I it was the idea that it was taboo to eat anything that was um, a uh, a carnivore. It, anything that was that also ate meat could was, attack I guess, you. Considered, yeah, that could attack, was considered taboo to eat mm-hmm. as well. So that was the idea where if you took on that skin of that carnivore, that was one of the I guess gateways to become one of the ship. Shapeshifters. Yes. So, like, you don't hunt. So, and hunting is still a big thing in tribes, just so everybody knows. And understand that when mm-hmm. tribes, uh, and I know, like, Elfie's vegan, and so, and I would never, and I've had my moments of being vegan and not being vegan. And understand that when tribes use it, like, even my grandmother, she would teach me when you use an animal for, like, meat or to, like, feed the tribe, they use the whole animal. So they use the mm-hmm. skin for the people. The bones are usually used for, like, weapons. And they sometimes they still do that to this day. They'll even use the bones and, and create jewelry out of them or things like that for the tribe. So I, in my opinion, it would be better to use the animals on the land to feed the people and use the whole animal versus, like, a sport where you're just going to kill to kill. You know, like, and you do nothing with that animal. So I can support it more on the side of it's been in my indigenous heritage for literally, like, ever literally Mm -hmm. um but one thing you don't do is you don't kill certain animals wolves are like very sacred to um native indigenous tribes not all but some and um and like there's other animals that are respected like cougars bobcats certain things like that and the reason they look at those remember like indigenous heritage is extremely spiritual guys like extreme like i wish my grandma was still here because I think you guys would be fascinated just to like listen to her talk about it because spiritualism in, in, in the Cherokee heritage was you like look at each animal as a gift from God or a gift from like the greater, you know? And mm-hmm. like even if it's a bobcat or it's a beautiful wild creature and like you don't fuck with it because that's God's creature sort of thing. And like don't kill it, don't hurt it, don't harm it, don't 
hunt for sport that is god's creature like we are we have it's very like very 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 spiritual now on the other side you're also incorporating things like these crypto characters like skinwalkers who are coming in as wolves cougars bobcats vicious more vicious carnivore animals and people are like don't kill it and that's the lore behind it because if it is the skinwalker it it will either kill you or it, or you will become the next skinwalker is sort of how like the tiara is passed is that a good way of explaining it elfie i think it's one of those things where is um i can definitely agree where it's like it's one thing to hunt for food and to use all of it it's another thing to hunt for sport because then it's considered a waste and that's probably why they wouldn't hunt the, the animals, the carnivore animals, because also I can see where it could be a balancing where these animals also help with population control of the herbivores and everything. So don't mm-hmm. go after those. And also it's like, you don't eat them, so why would you hunt them? Mm-hmm. And um, I could see where it's maybe also, this might be where sometimes I think we've oversimplified it where it's a more of a balancing of nature where mm-hmm. there's always a chaos and order and even though we're not sure what the skinwalker might be the balancing to the order mm-hmm. of nature so don't mess with don't mess the with it for other reasons <laughs> either because it's balance yes exactly so there's mm-hmm. a lot of reasons you wouldn't want to mess with the skinwalker maybe he's trying to create balance within the environment of the tribe or like you know on the reservation Somebody said, I doubt there are a lot of indigenous vegans. Actually, my grandmother speaks of some of her family on the reservation being vegetarian. It was very, Mm -hmm. it was, you can definitely be vegetarian and be indigenous, 100%. Berries were a big thing, um, you know, on the trails and stuff like that and and incorporating lots of vegetables that were grown. So yes, it's, it's absolutely possible. Remember, medicine men are still a big thing on the tribes. And the medicine men, like, can create not only medications out of, like, holistic what we know as holistic modernism sees it as holistic to them it's just medicine you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like that's the difference but with that being said you can the medicine men would also create certain recipes because they would know what vegetables or um things went together or like fruits went together so they could create um because holistic once again you're talking about things that are made from the land so they could create recipes through like holistic practices it's really interesting if you look into it like it can get really deep but um so yes it is possible so now going back to the navajo which is skinwalkers so this is basically like a cultural belief cultural value um Mm -hmm. and it's like extremely respected by everybody especially like who are considered the community healers of the group which would be once again, every tribe call, may every tribe may not call the medicine men. That might be an older word for it. It may not be a current like modern name for them. But they do have holistic healers that are on the res. They also do have regular doctors now because we are you know in this new century. I told you guys I can get free health care on any reservation. Um, but it's very very respected. Now, if you're talking about a skinwalker being in downtown Vegas on that reservation, I don't think so. We're talking about more rural locations, so don't automatically assume that if there's a reservation, there's a skinwalker on the res. So, you know, the reservation and they probably down. Probably wouldn't even talk about it if there was. <laughs> well, and and you really sh- it's dis- it's actually considered disrespectful if you're going on mm-hmm. to an indi- into an indigenous community. You don't go in and be like, hey, everybody, I just want to know if there was a skinwalker around. Like, <laughs> You just don't do that, you know? Like, now it, That's probably not the first thing you want to come out with when mm-mm. you're, like, trying to introduce yourself. Exactly. But it is interesting because if you want my opinion on, like, if, if I were to go investigate the skinwalker versus ghost adventures, mm-hmm. because I am, like, I have what's called a blue card, which proves that my family... Um, it, it proves my genealogy, essentially, of my family being oh. on the Trail of Tears, okay? Not everybody has a blue card. Like, you have to have... Your family went through some shit, is basically what it says, you know? Like, your family mm-hmm. survived genocide, and I have one of those cards. So I bet that if Ghost Girl Diaries went to investigate the Skinwalker, we would get more information with me as the host, for sure. Well, I also, I would think, too, like, I feel like this would be something you want to do, all, like, almost six months a year of pre-production of just talking to people, getting to know them, and, and trying to better understand and also show them that you mean great respect for it, because mm-hmm. I think that might have been the problem, was they've, people outside community have just seen one 
aspect of the skinwalker mm -hmm. and they just like they already feel like we can tell you all this stuff but you're just going to look at it as like a big bad thing mm -hmm. and just oversimplify it and Not that only might be why they just like, needs nope. to be respected but we as a community of people need to be respected yeah, and it needs to be grown into like an I trust aspect is is sort of what Elfie's saying, and I agree one hundred percent. Like you would need to build that trust over time, and to be honest, if I didn't do it the correct way, like if Ghost Girl Diaries went to investigate Skinwalkers, I would be disrespecting mm -hmm. my heritage. Mm -hmm. And my grandma would my grandma's strong. Okay, like my grandma, her energy, like she's still around. She doesn't mess around. She lets you know when she's here. And my grandmother would come, she would slap me in the face if I did something to disrespect indigenous people. So I wouldn't be able to do it incorrectly. But once again, like you're saying, Elfie, why wouldn't you want to do it the right way? Even if it does take time, because you're going to mm -hmm. get more viable information on whatever it is that you're seeking. They just don't want someone coming in being like, oh, I heard there was a cannibalistic uh, sh shapeshifter in your backyard. Can I meet him? Right? I mean, like, that's yeah, not really. how this works. Like, that's not mm -hmm. how this works. You don't, you, you already sound well, like you're sort of disrespecting the tribe. I mean, there was a, there was this clip I saw, I think it was a clip from that, the whole Skinwalker Ranch show or something, and they had brought on someone who, to do a, a, a prayer and everything to give offering tobacco and, and whatnot, and he's mm -hmm. like, okay. And he does his thing, he gives offering tobacco, and then he turns to them going, like, I hope you guys were praying too, because you're the ones doing this not me it's, and it was just very interesting he's look he looked at him like okay i'm going to do this but ultimately this is your problem not mine <laughs> wow 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 which you know is kind of well okay let's just let's go off of that for a second then because i feel like that's pretty funny okay did you watch the ghost adventures episode when they took the like edible from the medicine woman what you didn't see that no, I did not see that. Okay. Or it's been a while. The Wait, medicine. They took oh, yeah. Okay. This... <laughs> she's I can't breathe. I'm sorry. So the medicine woman is there. Okay. She's doing, okay. she's doing like this, you know, it's a very spiritual thing. Once again, it's a ritual. Mm -hmm. She's doing like a, it's, it's very, I mean, although it's spiritual on the side of um, indigenous people, it's also very like witchcraft, like straight up. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so she's doing kind of like this spell, like a prayer, protection prayer over them to like keep them safe. So like the skinwalker doesn't eat them is basically they're participating mm -hmm. in. And yeah. they gave all of the guys this like edible okay and she was like they're oh, like God. what is it and she's like it's just medicine you know like from the medicine <laughs> man like it's medicine so okay i am indigenous and i would know better not to ever take someone from indigenous on you know what i'm saying like no, don't do that don't, no <laughs> what is it like i need to know what it is it's and just it, medicine <laughs> define medicine no it ended up being a hallucinogenic elfie Oh, you'll see all sorts of things now. <laughs> Skinwalker and all. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in the car and they're like laughing. Apparently they said they were in the car for like four hours and their whole face is like morphing and like they just think everything's hilarious. So anyway, that's like taking like way too much mugwort. Never take too much mugwort. You're going to start hallucinating. How much did they take? I don't even know what it was. Well, I they said what it was. I don't, rem I don't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember... I, I feel like part of it was probably very sacred, and then on the other part of it is like we're just going to mess with them now. I think, and from my opinion, just, <laughs> I think they go. gave it to you them hoping they would pass out and not go look for the skinwalker. That's what I think they did. <laughs> I do. Mm -hmm. We're going to save you from yourself. Here. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> we don't want you to end up dead on a reservation, and then we have a lawsuit. So yeah. <laughs> we're going to give you a hallucinogenic okay, would... with fingers crossed that you pass out for the next two days and then you'll go home and you won't remember passing out like literally. Actually, that's probably a pretty good theory right there. Mm -hmm. I, I probably would not be surprised. They're like, we don't want you dying on uh, here. <laughs> so we're just going to do this. <laughs> we don't want to be responsible for your body on our reservation. So just yeah. here's, some, here's some drugs. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, so um, if you're calling yourself like a Navajo witch, you are seen as evil, and then there have been some, quote, Navajo witches that are known to um, portray in, like, twisted ceremonies and, like, using dark magic, um, med like, bad medicine, dark medicine, dark magic. And once again, remember what I said earlier about um, the indigenous people being very spiritual when it comes to animals. 
I mm-hmm. feel the same way. Like, I would never, ever participate in something where they were, you know, uh, killing an animal or giving an animal over as a sacrifice. Like, I would never, because that's just not respectful of my heritage. And um, that's how these people feel. If there are dark witches, which they say that there are, that practice in the Navajo tribe, they're, they're doing things that are completely against their cultural norms, which is like offering a live chicken to the skinwalker or offering, you know, in, in the mind of an indigenous person who's very spiritual, you wouldn't leave a chicken tied up by its neck outside where it couldn't get away for a predator to get it. That's not like the indigenous way. And also might I add that when indigenous do kill animals for like, or if it's hunting or whatever for their meals, they give like a serious thanks. Like it is very um, Avatar. Did you ever watch the movie Avatar, Elfie? Mm-hmm. You know when they they like they hunted the animal. They were like thank the animal for giving its body to the tribe, and they thank like the gods for giving it to the tribe. Same thing. So yeah. if you have tribe members going out sacrificing animals, oh, it's a big no no. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a big no-no. So what I'm saying if, is if anyone out there is in the Navajo Nation practicing dark magic, it is extremely secretive. They're not sharing it with the other tribes because they can be extremely shunned from the tribe for doing that. Which I don't like sacrifices either. And I know that Elfie doesn't if she's vegan, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, hands down. <laughs> well, I I think, okay, there, there's definitely cultures where there's animal sacrifices that end up with it's eaten and it's food and everything i and they're quick sacrifices too they're not they don't abuse or torture the animal is a very quick thing so th- to me that's usually more if that's part of the culture that's fine it's the abusing or the let's let this linger out that mm-hmm. and you don't utilize the entire animal that's where i have the problem with mm-hmm. i know I agree. I don't like animal abuse at all. I don't like child child abuse and animal abuse. That's something I'll punch it in the face for. You know what I mean? Like, just don't even go there with me. Um, Legends of witchcraft. So once again, we're going into the trickster stuff. So it's mostly known as a coyote. Now, another thing, there is... Where's my phone at? There is a person who's on... Let me see if I can find him. I forgot to look it up before the stream. This mm. guy... Um, lives on a ranch like with his family in Arizona and he has a TikTok account and swears that um here it is that one cowboy he swears he's always catching his skinwalker on camera so what? yeah it's amazing so I'm gonna hold this up for you guys to see I don't if you can see it. it's called that one cowboy so at I mean I'm gonna type it out for you guys right now so if, the yeah, go on TikTok and find him because you guys are going to be obsessed with it. It's called That One Cow Boy on TikTok. TikTok. So it's That Number One Cowboy, all one word. Anyway, he has a ranch in, um, in uh, Arizona and he's always catching the skinwalker on his ranch and it's amazing. He'll be walking out like to get his horses and it's really quiet and all of a sudden you'll hear something in the distance like it's the skinwalker and it'll be like, hello, hello. And it's pitch black out, pitch black. Mm-hmm. And he hears like a hello way out there and I'm like, what is going on? I would love to get in contact with him and um, see if he'd let us go investigate down there. That would be fascinating. Well, I mean, what's interesting is like when they talk reports of seeing the skinwalker in animal form it's to me that the creepiest part is actually the idea of when you look at it you look at his eyes that it has human-like eyes mm-hmm. to me that this the idea of animal face with human-like eyes that would really stand out like okay there's something there <laughs> i totally agree with the statement of the eyes are um, the window of the soul mm-hmm so oh, yeah. I agree. If I could see... Oh, cat, please. Cat's like, let's go to Skinwalker Ranch. I would I would actually be down she for that. She would not be able to <laughs> handle it. She'd be like, no, I can't do this. I'm going to stay at home base. And like, I'll walk you guys and let you know which direction to go. Elfie, you go north. Crystal, you go south. Bye. <laughs> like, literally. It's, oh, my God. It's like five, 512 acres mm-hmm. to explore. 
yeah. of like mountains and open fields and rocks and I don't know looking at it it's like I think Skinwalker would be probably the least of our concern because I'd be more worried about like the snakes and wild animals and mm -hmm. falling off the side of a cliff. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's true. You wouldn't want to go like gung ho and not pay attention to what you're doing. You could literally just walk off a cliff, like actually. But it's interesting because this guy, when he's doing his little investigations, he doesn't even mean to, by the way. But even his horses and his animals react to hearing what he calls the Skinwalker. Yeah, and, because they probably know better. They're and like, nope. that is so cool. Because I believe animals' instincts is, like, raw. Like, they know mm -hmm. before it happens. You know, like, they say before, like, a tsunami hits or, like, an earthquake, animals have already left the area. And they're literally, mm -hmm. like, running out. It's their instincts. Like, they can feel the electromagnetic fields coming up from the earth. Like, they know. Like, they only know to trust their intuition. You know, like, animal communication is so different from humans where, like, our human brain can get involved and we're like, wait, did that really happen? Where animals are like, oh, no, no, I trust my instincts. I don't even question it. So it's really interesting to even see Kat says she's going to crochet the skinwalker scarf. Oh. <laughs> can you imagine seeing a skinwalker with a oh, scarf? <laughs> I can't breathe. It's like, like, it's like a cougar on its feet. It's like walking with a scarf tied around its neck. Good cat. That's a good one. Jeez. Oh my god. I'm dead. I'm okay, I don't even know if I can continue the stream. Like literally Jesus. <laughs> oh my god, I'm screaming. Okay. Um, let's move forward. If okay. I can. <laughs> I can because the cat's ridiculous scarf. Um, there's a picture now. <laughs> oh I know. <laughs> um so oh, okay, another thing we did, we left out. The skinwalker can possess mm -hmm. people. I forgot to talk about that. Yeah, it can, it can, like, overpower <coughs> or take over people. So I'm that's wondering if... That's why it's the whole, like, don't look into the eyes Yeah, part. I'm wondering if that's what, like, the eyes thing they kept saying, like, over and over is, like, just don't look in the eyes. Like, just, if you see it, just don't, like, avoid eye contact at all costs. And it makes well, you wonder... Well, they said there'd be, like, human eyes and animal face, but mm -hmm. then when it's human, it has animal eyes and the human face. Right. And it's just, like... So don't look into the eyes. So just don't look at it, guys. Look at the chin. <laughs> look at its chin. Be like, you know. Don't make eye contact. Something about you just doesn't look right. Like, you look like you're a combination here. It, what do you think about Chupacabra? Oh, the, the goat sucker? Yeah. That one, I don't, I'm not sure what that is. That is. I've seen some claim footage and pictures, and it just, sometimes it looks like, to me, like some sort of, like, canine with mange or something i'm not sure what to think of it honestly if it's more uh urban legend than real but i mean there's <laughs> been enough cases of weird stuff and animals being affected cat said look at its scarf not its eyes i'm sorry i'm just dead look um, at its scarf. <laughs> <laughs> i'm such screaming. a great scarf you have uh, wow <laughs> that is like so last season like i think no. you need a new one you know what i mean <laughs> jeez um no as no, far as chupacabra my, my Go ahead. My top crypto right now on my list is like I want to go back and like investigate Jersey Devil. Like I want to go back to the Barrens. <laughs> Ooh, now that sounds like it would be fun. That sounds like it'd be fun. Oh yeah. But see, once again, I wouldn't want to go during like it needs to be like April or May where it's not too cold and it's like not too hot out either. You know? Because mm -hmm. if it gets too hot, you're gonna get a lot of bugs. Oh yeah. And if it's too cold, you're just gonna be miserable. So you've gotta find that sweet spot of like it is, it's like you said, really planning out when and doing oh, yeah. pre production on like filming. You know, it needs to be done right. Now with Chupacabra, my opinion is I because that Chupacabra does exist on some um native land, like in the south. Normally it's like the south side. I mm -hmm. think that some pictures people get is literally just coyotes with mange. So, like, I throw those out immediately. Because I'm like, yeah, it looks like a coyote that, that has mange, guys. Like, just leave the coyote yep. alone. Don't hunt it down and kill it. It's obviously had a hard life. Why don't you help give it a bath instead and release it back into the wild? You know? Like, literally. Now, other, other ones I've heard of, like, pertaining to Puerto Rico area and even, like, Florida. Mm-hmm. It'll show up, and it literally does do the goat-sucking thing where there's, like, two pierced spots in the neck, and then it's gone, and nobody hears about it again for years. So my theory is, I think it could be, like, an extraterrestrial. Oh, similar to, like, the, the, um the mangling of the cows and everything and the, the weird stuff that they report. Well, that's even different. Like, with the cow mutilations, mm -hmm. I think that's our own government doing it to scare us. That 
to me, that's I've all okay. Of all the UFO stuff, I've always found the whole cow mutilations. This is the weirdest part of it all, where it's and even the the uh, Skinwalker Ranch has its own fair share of it, where it's mm-hmm. like chunks of the cows left. There's no blood. There's no nothing. Mm-hmm. It's like it's been gutted mm-hmm. and everything, and it's just like. Why? There are there's, some... There's the well, why. It, there, what's that documentary, Cat? if you're watching? There's a documentary on Netflix that Kat and I watched. You need to watch it, Elfie. It's freaking amazing. Mm. It's this guy who is a doctor, and he used to... Um, he actually used to work on patients that worked with um, extraterrestrials, and that's what, like, made him quit. He literally quit being a doctor. Like, imagine going to med school and then quitting your career. All to oh, wow. focus on, like, UFO stuff. So, anyway... I'll find out the, the name of it and give it to you. But he swears that the cattle mutilations are our own government doing it. But there was one instance that happened, and I think it was, like, in the 60s or something. And it was a couple of guys that were walking through the triangle that exists in um, Alaska. Okay. Stephen Greer is the guy that did this video or this movie that's on Netflix. You need to watch. He, he's on my social media. If you look up Stephen Greer and follow him. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there was another case that happened in the 60s, and these guys were hiking through the Alaskan Triangle, and they stumbled upon something similar to, like, the cattle mutilations, except it was, like, a circular... It was, like, a circle. There was, like, a a humpback whale in the middle of the forest that had been, like, like, the same as the cattle mutilations. There had been a couple of cows, like an ox. There was, like, a bear... There was, like, some mountain lions, and it had been laid out in a circle. Now, I think that was probably extraterrestrial for sure. But, that's just, like, yeah. that just sounds strange. Like, a almost like a dumping ground of these mutilated animals? Yeah, it was, like, whoever... Was it was a like, humpback whale? Yeah, it was literally a whale in the middle of the forest. So that creeped me out. Okay. Because these guys were like, how the hell did a whale get to the middle of the forest? You know, like, mm-hmm. how, what the hell is going on? So there's some things I think are related to unacknowledged that's what it's called it's on netflix it's called unacknowledged it's so good oh my god it's gonna change your perspective on extraterrestrials it did for me and cat but um but yeah i do think chupacabra could be related to being an extraterrestrial almost like it comes down to like take the blood of these animals and then it like goes back up beam me up scotty style Mm -hmm. and like to take the blood back to have it like examined by their species i guess is that what you'd call it I mean, it's like you, the the they they describe them. They would like have a hole in them, and it's like their inside has been taken out, and all the blood, and it's like just this husk left in perfect condition, with except for the hole and just cleared out and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then you had the other ones where it was this almost interdimensional, where um, where they talked about how like a portal would literally just open up, something would hop out, and just walk away. Right. Just, just randomly. Like, here's a portal. It's inter- Well, I mean, you never know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do think anything could be possible. Like, I think when you've been in paranormal long enough, it is, like, kind of one of those things where, you're like, anything could happen. Like, anything could happen. Now, on the Skinwalker side, too, going back to that for a second, one thing I forgot mm-hmm. to mention is the, Na- the Navajo Nation says that there is usually more than one Skinwalker. And there is usually one that's in charge. And whoever's in charge is basically considered an an old man, and it's a very, like, he's very powerful with magic in certain ways. Okay. <coughs> sort of like, you would think of it as, like, I guess, a, an evil shaman? Is that what you sort of pictured? That's sort of what I pictured. No. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Almost like somebody, yeah, get- um, like an evil shaman, like, um using their powers for bad like they've learned the the like medicine ways of like the tribe and now they're turning it towards the evil or whatever yeah and that's what actually like said that's what i found interesting because it's like you had most of the time it was people who were healers who started off as healers and then turned dark but they never explained like why because they always talked about there was usually some some act taboo taboo action they had to do to initiate this whole skinwalker um, change, and they never exactly explain like why would why would someone who started off as a healer suddenly just decide to go? I'm dark. going to do this now, right? Like it's like because it almost sounds like they had to use 
like sometimes there was moments where they had to use magic that was darker or far beyond what they normally did and unfortunately they had to cross this line to do it well and once again it's like learning the ways of the tribe and taking that to like an advantage point i guess or a disadvantage point where they would use it against each other and against the tribe which is why it's like such such a shameful thing to do is sort of how i was reading into it Nikita mm-hmm. said that Kat needs to crochet Bigfoot a scarf. For God's sake, you guys. Like, <laughs> Jesus. All the cryptos get scarves. All of them are going to get scarves. Uh, <laughs> Kat, I just can't keep up with it. You know what I mean? Why aren't you writing these ideas down, Kat? You should See, be making we'll scarves know. with freaking Bigfoot in them and, like, Chupacabra and shit. Like, you're going to make money off of this, okay? <laughs> That's how everyone will know if Ghost Girl Diaries has done a crypto, if they find the crypto with a scarf. They're like, yep, Ghost Girl Diaries has been here. There is a scarf. You know what? We (laughs) care about Bigfoot's fashion, too, okay? Like, (laughs) we can't leave without, you know, Bigfoot having a GGD scarf on, okay? Like, we need people to know you're here. It'd be like, here's a gift. Thank you. How many much kids do you have? Cat would like to knit some hats as well, just in case your ears get cold. Like we have backup plans for you guys. Here's my business card. If you ever need anything, get online. Oh well, I mean, God. there's the little Bigfoots too. They want little like hats and mittens and everything. <laughs> mittens. Oh my God, Bigfoot mittens. Cat, I'm dead. Um, now another thing that I didn't realize, I didn't really know this, was Skinwalkers have other powers other than like the possession side or like killing you and cannibalizing you they can also Mm -hmm. um like read your mind mind control you they can cause you to have like force you to have thoughts and force you to have certain behaviors they can also cause disease illness destroy your life destroy your property and then obviously like just death is like impending doom is sort of what yeah what they feel is coming it sounds it sounds to me almost like I said going it I think it sounds like similar to what we said earlier about that balancing. It's almost like if you look at a healer, just flip it now on its head and everything a healer can do, they can do the opposite of that or the 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 um yeah, the opposite of that now. Instead of causing the good side of it now they're doing this instead. Mm-hmm. Now, another interesting thing that I didn't know about this is regarding the Navajo Nation. The only reason I'm bringing up Navajo Nation so much is because they are the most predominant with the Skinwalker. And once again, if you research Mm -hmm. this, there's literally, like, the Wendigo. Like, there's so many other ones with other nations that you could look up. There's just different variations and versions of it, depending on which tribe you're sort of researching. But... Mm. There was something called the Navajo Witch Purge of 1878. Did you read that part? I found that really interesting. I don't think I've read that part, no. And it was where they were talking about how a lot of the Navajo were serving um, because there was a series of wars. Obviously, we're talking 1878. We're still having treaty issues. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of wars that go on. I think you guys are going to find the pilot very interesting because um, the location that we went to was also on native land. And they also mm. had a war that happened with our own army, um, with the United States. So I think you'll find it very interesting. But anyway, a lot of the purge happened with the Navajo witches because they were being sidetracked because there was a war going on. So you had either mm. people that were defending in the war and that were dying or else people that were having to serve as like aid for the war. And this is all, once again, 1878. So I just found that interesting because you don't realize, like, of course that's going to come into play and affect affect the longevity of the tribe and how many people are left after the war. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is, it also says, like, another reason long-term that it affected the Navajo was after the wars, like, their water was polluted, their crops had failed, there was illness, death, decay, dying, um, their numbers obviously dramatically decreased. And um, I think this was one of the wars that happened. It was over the course of, like, four years and then find this was around the four corners and then finally like their land was sort of um relinquished back which is just crazy so you don't think about stuff like that affecting once again that could go into the skinwalker side where they say sometimes the skinwalker is sort of protecting the people protecting the reservation protecting the land like elfie says bringing balance yeah because there hasn't been oh yeah you know, like, that's a lot of trauma that was done. 1864 is not really that long ago. You know what I mean? Like, it's really not. And like you said, there's still stuff going on even to this day. It's not, it, it's, it's a 
continuous it sounds like it's a continuous open wound that mm -hmm. has not yet fully healed at all mm -hmm. okay so this is another interesting thing so this is this this matches what this guy that one cowboy on t you guys gotta follow him if you're a paranormal lover you've got to follow him on tiktok you're gonna love it so what they also say is um on the parts of the ranch or parts of the reservation some people will own livestock and, and wildlife and they'll mm -hmm. have like sheep pens or like you know lamb pens or whatever because sometimes they'll still like shear sheep and like create god forbid yarn for cat you know things like that you know like so that she can make bigfoot you know a scarf and some mittens but they'll be out like checking on their sheep pen at night and then all of a sudden they'll hear like laughter coming from the wooded area which they think is the skinwalker and it's completely dark, pitch black on the reservation. Remember, they don't have as much electricity as we do in the cities. So it's mm -hmm. pitch black. So you know there's not a person hanging out in the woods at night. Like, who's doing I mean, there could be some weirdo doing that, you know? Like, maybe it's one of the dark witches. But they'll literally look in the woods and see nothing, but they still hear laughter coming. And once again, like, they're, they or their animals are being stalked by the that, skinwalker. That would be, honestly, that would be very creepy. Just because, like... Especially if you're out, I've been out in some middle of nowhere places where there is no light pollution whatsoever, and mm -hmm. when it is dark, it is dark, where you cannot see the your hand in front of your face, and to suddenly hear laughter out in the distance, I'll be like, mm -hmm. we're going inside and locking everything up. I just wrote his um, TikTok, it's that one cowboy, number one cowboy in TikTok. Um, I'm gonna have to he has that like out. he has like a super like handlebar mustache like no joke, <laughs> like straight up. If you um, nice, let's see, if, let's see if I can get a picture of it on here. It's kind of blurry, but anyway, yeah, he has like horses and all kinds of cattle and stuff. So yeah, it's really cool. In fact, I have a lot of uh, paranormal TikTokers that I found. So if you go through who I'm following, you'll you'll be able to find some of the haunted ones. I also follow some makeup gurus, so just make sure you look at their profile first. There's another girl on TikTok that um, she has a haunted doll. Have you seen that, Elfie? No, I, I have not been on TikTok for a while because I fell down the rabbit hole a couple times. Uh, <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. I but, need a break from this. <laughs> there's a girl on TikTok that um, talks to her doll and she like investigates her haunted doll, which I mean, even if the doll wasn't Ooh. haunted, it is now because she's creating it. You know what I mean? Hey, you, you put in energy and you're oh. like charging it up. And she'll be talking to it and all of a sudden her door will slam. And I'm like, girl, is it worth the TikTok views? Because I don't think it is. Is, you know like anyway. unless you have established rules in your own house and everything it's like yeah why why make some rules first mm -mm. yeah she she does dowsing rod discussions with her haunted doll and i'm like nope mm. that's not for <laughs> me girl you get it boo um so yeah i guess we could talk about the windigo windigo um really quickly i almost said windigo <laughs> windigo um the Wendigo is another version of the folklore spirit, but this one's more along the East Coast, Canada, mm -hmm. Great Lakes region of the United States. And it's basically depicted as this malevolent spirit that takes on the characteristics of a human and or um, being. I mean, it's it, to me, it's pretty much exactly like the Skinwalker, except it's just called the Wendigo. Well, this one, I'm, I'm actually a little more familiar with the Wendigo then the skinwalker at times just because um i've just heard more stories and everything and what i find can you hear me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay sorry yeah. there was some, like, um the difference i noticed between the windigo and the skinwalker even though they do have similar traits is the windigo seems to have come out of great in some way probably similar great devastation like usually cold winter starvation and once again, cannibalism, but it's usually out of necessity or of breaking the taboo of eating human flesh. And that seems to then generate the Wendigo <clears throat> compared to the Skinwalker, where it seems to be someone who's done it purposely, whereas the Wendigo is something is done out of a great hardship of winter mm -hmm. or starvation to make this happen. To make, to create it. Right. Yeah. And the Wendigo is sort of more, I mean, when I was looking at pictures, the Wendigo, for some reason, is portrayed with antlers. Did you notice that there was a difference? Yeah, I, I don't know if that is, like, something that's a more recent 
addition to it's it's the the folklore of it because I think there was like a couple of movies or <laughs> stories that came out like oh it has antlers and sharp teeth and suddenly now all depictions of Wendigos like it's got the antlers. <laughs> Well, first of all, Nikita said, I have tons of haunted dolls, and they love to mess with me in my sleep. That's a no from me. <laughs> um, I mean, I have, like, I get energy in the house, but I know it's, like, familiar. I would not be letting demons chill in here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have time for that. Um, and then Kat <laughs> said that she thinks the Wendigo's angry because it doesn't have a scarf. Oh well, I mean, it, it's even cold. It gets colder for the window go than Skinwalker, so it probably would <laughs> want to use the scarf. It's true. It would want that scarf badly. <laughs> yeah, we only need the scarf for like Mothman on like the East Coast. You know what I mean? Like we just oh, just. God, yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I would love to go investigate crypto. So, so, in your opinion, would you still be interested in investigating crypto now that we're talking about like the Skinwalker and Wendigo and all that? I would still actually be very. I would definitely be down for it. Actually, the things that more unnerved me was like the uh the 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 pk readings and the radiation stuff mm -hmm. and and that stuff i'm like okay that that makes me slightly nervous right but yeah. the rest of the crypto stuff i'm like yeah let's go for it let's have some fun yeah see here's the problem is that i would be that like dumb blonde girl that fell in the forest and died and got eaten like, did you ever like, see that movie that with, way. like, what? where Paris Hilton, like, died and got, like, wasn't it the Wax Museum or whatever it was? The Wax? Oh, House of Wax. That would be yeah. me. Like, I would trip over my platform shoes and, like, die in the forest. And I'd be like, go okay, on without me. Just go. Honestly, also, the total time. I think House Wax was probably showcased for sure. She is so very smart with her, her her career and everything because she knew everyone would want to see her die covered in melted wax she did an like, interview not too long ago saying like she's not who you guys think she is you know what i mean and she's like, oh yeah she's really smart so yeah she created a character and made some money off of it no complaints she's smart she knew what she was doing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. any other questions oh, yeah. let me look through here and see if i missed anything else uh cat said there's been sightings of the wendigo in north new hampshire it's just another mm -hmm. reason for you to move to vegas boo yeah, I think it, it's basically in the cold area. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it's been sighted along the Appalachian Trail and everything. And it's it's the idea of just this, the coldest time is when you might run into it. <laughs> um, Erica said, I follow someone, Shasta, I'm not sure how to say it, on TikTok. And she's a tour guide at the Haunted Museum. And she has haunted dolls at her home that she investigates as well. See, that's just not, I don't know. Am I a weenus for not, like, wanting to investigate in my house? Like, I just... I think I know the power that it holds and, like, what can happen if you do that. Like, Elfie says, I, like, she has, like, friendly spirits that live with her. And, like, that's one mm. thing. Like, I know when my family's in. I know when Christian comes to see me. Like, that's different. But I'm not about, like, investigating stuff in my house. I just... I'm not about it. I've done it before. And it's caused, like, some serious repercussions. And that's why I, I put up a serious, you know bottom line maybe it's the idea of like you don't want to take your home your work home with you and it's like you, you want a space where you don't have to worry about something happening <laughs> well my dog i have four four dogs and one one's like you know kind of elderly now diva's mm -hmm. older and they're my kids and like my dogs are extremely sensitive to paranormal activity like they will tell me when something's in the house before i know something's in the house Mm -hmm. And I don't want my dogs to be affected. You know, it would be the same if I had kids. Like, I wouldn't want to have kids and have paranormal activity in the house, you know? I look at my dogs like my actual children. So that's why I just, mm -mm, no. Oh, no. I'm, I'm convinced at this point, whenever I go house hunting, I will take my puppy with me because I know if, like, the puppy does not want to go this house, into the house, I'd be like, huh, anything particularly I should know about the house mm -hmm. <laughs> because... The dog doesn't want to go in. <laughs> it's true. Would I investigate other people's houses? Oh, yeah, I'm for sure. I'm talking about, oh, yeah. like, the TikTokers, like, the people that are on TikTok that are, like, in at home, like, constantly investigating. Like, I also, I'm a Taurus. I like my sleep, man. You know? Like, well, there's I, the, the TikToks that people investigate their own house, but I've seen TikToks people investigate their work, and it's like, you're at your work. That's probably not where you want stuff to be happening there either. No, that's true. It's tr And, like, my studio, like, if I do Creeps and Cosmetics, every time I film Creeps and Cosmetics in my studio, which I'm in there right now, 
there's always activity. I always have to sage and like get out whatever's been in here. Mm-hmm. And so why would I want to do TikToks where I'm constantly saging the house? Like it just makes no sense to me. I don't know. I just think like Elfie said, you put energy into something. If you start inviting one mm-hmm. thing in, don't think it's one thing, boo. It's a revolving I mean, door talk- and it never closes. Never. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk to whatever's already in the house and like say hi and everything, do that stuff, but even I've at times been hesitant going like, uh, do I really want, should I, uh, we're good. We already have enough people in the house. <laughs> should I know? That's already enough. Well, it's <laughs> true. Good. It's true. Well, that and like, I'll get like weird things too. Like I've had Ed Gein make an appearance in here, you know, a few times and like, who wants a serial killer in their house just chilling? You know, it's not as glamorous as you think it is. <laughs> It's not <laughs> it's not glamorous, guys, okay? You know. I bet you my my spirit guides are so sick of my shit at this point. They're just like, "Here goes Crystal bringing home Ed Gein again. We got to help step in to get You're rid of him again." in the corner. <laughs> I need a vacation. <laughs> Literally, it's such dark. Why are we laughing? We're sick. Oh my god, it's dark humor. Well, thank you guys so much for being with us today. Elfie, thank you again so much. I appreciate your face. We will see Elfie, let's see, two weeks from now. Does that sound right? Yep, I think so. Yeah, two weeks from now. I have the uh, agenda. Let me pull it up so that you guys know what we're doing here over the next couple of weeks. I actually emailed Kat and uh, um, Elfie the other day because I wanted to make sure I had my uh, organization down. You know what I'm saying? It's nice to be organized and be able to, like, pay attention to what we're doing after. I was like, what are we talking about this week again? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I know. Can't keep we track. Have so many to- there's a lot of topics. There's Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, we yeah. A lot. Um, a lot of good ones. I can't find it. Kat, what are we talking about next week? Crochet? Knitting for um, chup- Chupacabra? <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, I, what next week is the last week of... I was- I'm doing BTK with you in two weeks. I know that. Yeah. I want to see a Bigfoot knitted, like, socks. I want to see Bigfoot knitted socks. <laughs> oh, my God. LV wants Bigfoot knitted socks. There we go. You know? There. I mean, come on. It's, it's... <laughs> Bigfoot's just going to be totally, like, the hat, the scarf, the socks. Like, all they are cryptos are going to be so jealous. <laughs> oh, my God. It's true. Can you, can you imagine Mothman flying around with, like... A little beanie that's like tied to his chin, just so it doesn't fly off Aww. during flight. You know what I mean? We have some good oh my ideas. God, that was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're sick. Black Eyed Kids is next week. Ooh, that'll be a good one. Yes. Ooh, that'll be a good one. That'll be a real good one. Okay, Elfie, thank you so so much. So we'll see you in two weeks for BTK. Everybody, make sure you follow Elfie at Elfie Music on Instagram and Twitter, or you can look for her in my following. Uh, who I follow in my followers. There we go. Spit it out, Crystal. <laughs> thank you, Elfie. We appreciate. It. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. See y'all. Bye, Elfie. <laughs> um, so I just want to chat with you guys for one minute and just tell you again, thank you for being so supportive with my book. It's just, it's been overwhelming to see you guys, uh, you know, share with me um, pictures when you're getting the book in. Like, I, I'm so giddy. Whenever you guys get a picture in of, of getting the book and you, like, tweet it at me or, like, send it to me on social media, like, I literally have, like, a screaming meltdown because I can't believe it's, like, a thing. It's a real thing. So... Thank you so much. Um, you know, make sure you're following us on social media. There's been merch that I, and I know a ton of you guys have been buying merch. There's merch on the um, ghostgirlglam.com, but I also added the domain ghostgirldiaries.com. So you should be able to find it in a couple of days for ghostgirldiaries.com um, and look for the merch. Um, there's going to be more merch. I'm going to put up some more merch for each um holiday and it's all going to be like ghost girl merch for each holiday so i've got to start brainstorming some stuff for saint patrick's day since um you know valentine's is almost order but there is a couple of things there i also think i'm going to add to my website i've had a lot of people messaging me about um a book signing and there's a couple of things i'd like to talk about that i'm considering <coughs> doing a book signing in the future once you know corona's over and like we we're like not trapped in our houses anymore so i'm considering that i'm also considering 
adding a purchase on my website that you can buy a signed book. It is going to cost a little bit more because I have to buy the book out of pocket, get the book shipped to me, sign the book for you, and then ship the book to you. So obviously it's going to like, it's not just your typical regular book. So if that's something you guys are interested in, keep looking on my website. I'm going to have that updated. Obviously I'm, I've got more retail that's coming onto my website too. I've been getting some shipments in on um, really, really beautiful, awesome um, astrology jewelry that I'm excited to incorporate on my website as well, which will be Ghost Girl merch. And um, other than that, I just wanted to say thank you guys. Shout out to everybody. Let me make sure I um, didn't miss any any questions. No questions, okay? And um, this will be uploaded as a podcast. It'll also be uploaded to YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow. So if you missed it, it will be live there. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. I will hopefully be getting some editing done for you guys for YouTube. I'm finally kind of coming back down from, you know, finishing the book and stuff like that. So um, look out for the new episode on GGD for Cecil Hotel. I also think I'm going to start a new series for astrology on serial killers for the Ghost Girl Diaries channel. I think I'm going to start with serial killers that I've met in the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? Like Ed Gein. Maybe we'll start with Ed Gein and like Ted Bundy or something. And uh, hopefully there'll be some new creeps and cosmetics that will be live soon. I just need to edit them. I just, I haven't had the brain power to edit them after getting the book out. Like, my brain was like mush mush, you know? So make sure you guys are following me on social media. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs>